Good morning, Internet. Welcome back to my garage. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 tools to work on your motorcycle. Let's get into it. So in case this is your first time watching this channel, my name is Justin. I run this channel here called Bike and Bird where we take uh, stock bikes, turn them into cool bikes, group rides, all that kind of stuff, pretty much anything motorcycle related. So if that sounds like something you're interested, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But before we get into the list, I do want to say that tools within a garage are kind of one of those Pepsi versus Coke, Chevy versus Ford type situations where everyone's going to have what brand they lead to or what brand they prefer. But just know it really doesn't matter what brand you go with. Essentially, when it comes down to it, most tools on the market are going to get the job done. Some are going to be more expensive. Some are going to be less expensive. Some are going to be better quality. Some are going to be less quality. But this list is more focused on what tools you should buy. So number one on the list is going to be ratchets. No, not, not those ratchets. These ratchets. Things that make the noise. Ratchets come in three basic sizes. You got half inch, which is this big Mac daddy here. Three eighths, which is kind of in the middle, as well as a little baby one quarter. If you can afford all three, I definitely recommend getting all three. If you can only afford one, three eighths is the way to go because you can get up to pretty large sizes and it does get down to pretty small sizes as well. Of course, what good are ratchets without sockets? I'm including all this as one tool, but just to kind of say that this is not a separate tool. When it comes to sockets, you want to get at least one set metric and one set imperial. Metric is going to be your 10, 11 millimeters. Imperial is going to be your one quarter, seven sixteenths. That really makes no sense in today's world. If you want to go outside the basics, you can also get hex sockets as well as torque sockets. Hex sockets are going to be the hexagonal type that you'd see on say a hex key or uh, also referred to as an Allen key. And then your Torx bits are going to have your six point stars that have this kind of pattern. Both of these types of sockets are very commonly used on motorcycles, especially Harleys. Although there are different ways to get these sockets or bits, and we'll talk about that here in a second, sometimes having the leverage and speed of a ratchet really does help. And one last thing I'd recommend getting for your ratchets is an extension set. I've got some as small as this and as, as large as, as this. And yes, I have used this before. You can pick up those extension sets really cheap, especially at places like Harbor Freight. I'm a huge advocate of Harbor Freight tools. I think it's a great way to kind of get your foot in the door as far as working on bikes or cars or anything like that without having to really break the bank. I personally am a craftsman, man, man, craftsman, man. Uh, that's just what my dad used. It was, was, was passed down to me. It's what I purchased. I've never had an issue with it. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. But like I said, in the beginning of the video, some people are going to say that this is the worst tool ever made, but you can get this three ratchet set for around 80 bucks. This is just the ratchets, no socks or anything like that. Uh, I will go ahead and include a link for this set down in the description. Number two on my list is hex keys. Those are the little angled Allen keys as they're also called. Now, of course, I've got way more than any person really needs. Uh, this really is just a collection over the years of having to buy some when I'm out on the road or needing some to put in a bag or you name it. I really actually like this set from Harbor Freight. I'll go ahead and uh, link this down in the description as well. Actually, I'll include pretty much a link to everyone we talk about down in the description. Uh, this one features a short as well as a long. Some of the sizes are repeated. Some of them are only on the long and only on the short, but you've got uh, the metric here and the Imperial units here uh, covers a good portion of whatever range you might need. Outside of your standard Allen keys, these, these also do come in T-handles, which I really enjoy. Those are what's lined up right here back behind the laptop. Those are relatively cheap. Uh, those are only around 26 bucks at Harbor Freight. Once again, advocate of Harbor Freight, get a good deal on some cheap ass tools. Granted, they're not going to last you a lifetime, maybe, but uh, I've always had a good experience with them. Number three on the list is going to be a large adjustable wrench or an adjustable spanner if you live overseas, also sometimes referred to as a monkey wrench, but not one of them but two of them. Reason being is that uh, if you get a large enough size, you can use these to actually undo the axle on your bike. Now you might be saying, why don't you buy the sockets? It's safer and it's not gonna mar the, the axle nuts, but you're right. But chances are you can get both of these wrenches for cheaper than the cost of just the sockets and you get a wide variety of things that you can use it on. Moving on to number four is going to be 
a torque wrench. In case you have no idea what a torque wrench is, uh, down here on the handle you can set uh, certain torque foot pounds or newton meters on this particular one. This is a 3 8 drive. I would also advise getting a half inch drive as well as a quarter inch drive. Uh, the quarter inch drive one is probably going to be in inch pounds, which is pretty useful on bikes as well. But basically what this does is uh, certain screws or certain bolts are going to have torque settings, which means it has to be tightened down at least, you know, 50 foot pounds for it to be tight and safe. This is of course really important on motorcycles because if you don't really tighten something to torque on a car, it might break something. You forget to torque something down on a bike, it could put you down and it could kill you. But basically how this works is you just set uh, whatever foot pounds or newton meters, whatever you're looking at uh, on the, the uh, bottom here on the grip. And then once it reaches that point, it's going to click. And it's gonna let you know, hey, you're at X foot pounds. If you wanna be doing work right, get yourself a torque wrench. I will say that these can get very expensive up into the hundreds of dollars. This one right here that you're seeing is a Harbor Freight Special. Got it for about 23 bucks. Coming in at number five is going to be a screwdriver, but more importantly, a bit set. Once again, Harbor Freight Special features all different sorts of bits. You've got uh, squares, flatheads, fill-ups, uh, torques, safety torques, hex, uh, safety hex. What I mean by safety is uh, sometimes they're referred to as, as safety. I don't know if everyone calls them that, but they're basically the torques or the hex with the hole in the middle. Uh, and then of course you've got all different sizes of Phillips heads up here at top. Basically you can just take one of these bits and plug it in the screwdriver. This thing right here is only 12 bucks and it has saved my ass so many times. I got this screwdriver in a different set but pretty much all of the bits are universal as far as size goes. I think if you add this to this set it's like five more dollars. So like 17 bucks and you can get one of these. Huge lifesaver, definitely helps out on pretty much every bike I've ever worked on. But I would recommend that anytime you buy something like a bit set, go ahead and take a Sharpie right top, bottom, do not open, because if I was to open it from here, all those bits are gonna fall out. It's happened to everyone. Just go ahead and mark it up as soon as you get it. Coming in at number six is going to be wrenches. Now, once again, I do recommend getting Imperial as well as Metric. Wrenches come in a lot of different styles and that can really affect the price. For example, you've got solid open-ended, which is gonna be basically this and then another one of these over here in a different size. Solid rings, which is gonna be like this on one side and like this without this little mechanism. This right here is called a ratcheting because you can actually put it on something and it ratchets as you tighten or loosen whatever you're tightening. If you're, this would be loosening, this would be tightening. They also make uh, what's called a flex head, which would basically be this on a pivot, so you can pivot it left and right. This is really uh, beneficial when you're trying to get into tight space and things like this. I pretty much only have these ratcheting wrenches. I've got a couple of, of smaller uh, solid close end, so I'm basically like this without the ratcheting, uh, to get into the really smaller spaces and the really smaller uh, nuts and bolts. Like I said, these can range quite a bit in size. Uh, I found one on Amazon, it was a 20 piece ratcheting for about 70 bucks. I do think that included both metric and imperial. I'll have to check the link though. Coming in at number seven is going to be our cheapest item on the list. And that's going to be these little precision picks. Now basically each one of these picks has a uh, different, very sharp tip at the end with different angles and different points and such. Six dollars for the uh, four piece set. This thing guys, this set has saved my butt so many times, I can't even tell you. I've got really fat fingers, I've got sausage fingers, and if you have the same, these are a lifesaver. It helps you, you know, pick out wires or hook a wire or press in a, a pin connector that you're trying to undo. Really guys, for six bucks, probably one of the most value $2 tools in my tool set. Number eight is going to be pliers. Now pliers come in a large variety of sizes as well as styles. But if I were to only have to recommend two or three, needle nose would be one of them. Slip lock, also called snub nose. Snap ring pliers, which are specific for snap rings, as well as diagonal pliers. Now usually diagonal pliers are around the same size as something like this. But when they get smaller, they're also have a different name, which is actually be tool number nine, which is going to be electrical diagonal pliers, also referred to as dikes. These are tiny little uh, electrical wire cutters. Great for bikes because uh, cutting zip ties, stuff like that, or even doing some electrical work where you have to cut wires in tight space. These little bitty dikes save the day time and time again. 
And then last, but certainly not least, is going to be a tap and die set. Now, in case you've never had to use a tap and die, you are one lucky person. Basically what a tap and die set is, is a, uh, hey, I f***ed up something, now I have to fix it. This is a 40 piece uh, Pittsburgh Harbor Freight Special. This set right here runs about 28 bucks. This tool right here, or this set um, of tools can get very expensive. You can find them anywhere from like $20 to like 400 plus. This one, like I said, about 28 bucks, it does lack, uh, but it has saved my butt quite a few times. I would say it's saved my butt more than it has lacked. I think I've only not had the specific tool or or tap or die that I need maybe twice out of about maybe 15, 20 times. Essentially what this is, is you have your uh, taps, which is kind of like a drill bit, but it basically re-threads a hole. So if you um, back out um, a bolt and it you know kind of gunks up the threads and you have are having trouble getting a bolt back in, you can run one of these through and it fixes it. Or the reverse problem, if you're backing out a bolt or a screw and it messes up the bolt or screw, you can use these dies to run the uh, screw or bolt through and basically clean up the threads. It's essentially a thread cleaner, whether they be exter external or internal. So there you guys have it, the top 10 tools that I use to work on motorcycles. Now, a couple more tips before I let you go. Combo sets, guys, combo sets. So you can find these really popular at Lowe's, Home Depot, Sears, is, is Sears even around? I don't think so. But the combo mechanics tool sets, you can get really good deals as opposed on those sets as opposed to buying everything separately. Also, secondhand stuff, garage sales, flea markets are great for tools. It's all metal stuff, guys. Like You can buy used stuff and it's probably gonna prefer form for another 20 to 100 years. Also, one more thing, if you do end up getting one of those combo sets, I've noticed a lot more these days that they're coming in these big plastic drawers. No, throw that shit away and get yourself a nice metal toolbox. Now, obviously, if you're working mobily, then the lighter, the better, but if you're working in a garage, you're not gonna be moving your tools around a lot, go ahead and invest in a nice metal toolbox. Once again, secondhand is a great option, flea markets, garage sales, but trust me, you will be happy in the end. Now, of course, this video is not going to be a catch-all, and you can't just get these 10 tools I named and be able to work on any bike ever, but it's gonna cover, I would say, about 85% of the jobs that you will need to do. Well, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.